The Anunnaki had bases around the world, but primarily in the Middle East. Lebanon, Israel, Egypt, Iraq, and also in India and South Africa. There are many artifacts that still exist in Iraq, but they're not allowed to be seen. As you might expect, much of the artifacts and ancient texts that told us of their existence were held in the Baghdad Museum, until the early 2000s, that is. In the wake of the invasion of Iraq in 2003, the museum in Baghdad where much of these ancient relics and clay tablets were stored was plundered and robbed of nearly all its contents. While some of the relics were undoubtedly taken by looters who would scavenge anything they could get their hands on, much of it seemed to have been whisked away by an organized military presence. The curators of the museum were responsible for some of these which were essentially salvage operations. Other relics, however, have since completely vanished, in particular clay tablets that held information dating back thousands and thousands of years. Some conspiracy theorists will tell you that this information has disappeared purposely and for a reason. Is it possible that these missing artifacts may have contained information regarding the origins of human beings on Earth? Many people have also noted how a lot of the old Mesopotamian relics and deities are almost identical to other ancient civilizations, despite having no known contact with each other. Would this suggest that most, if not all, creation stories, and indeed the births of most religions, trace back to one source, the Anunnaki? The story of missing artifacts is an interesting story and may feature in a future documentary, but for now we must move on as there is much information to be considered as we uncover the secrets of mankind's hidden history. Human beings were not only created by God, but are also genetically, symbolically, and literally related to a few off-planet civilizations, one particularly known on Earth as the Anunnaki. If you believe humans evolved solely from apes, why then are there still apes? Our story of human life on Earth is often told as creation myths, the planets in the heavens. But these myths were based on facts. This is why, around the world, we see the same tales of how one God was instrumental in assisting humanity during creation, the Great Flood, bringing knowledge to humanity. All cultures have their own creation stories of the gods and goddesses being on ships that came from the skies, often wearing masks or strange clothing and possessed some amazing abilities. All over Earth, we also share similar artwork, music, and technology largely based on extraterrestrial activity and intervention. From Lemuria to Atlantis to Samaria to Egypt, much of what we attribute to the Anunnaki was not their own doing. For instance, the Anunnaki were limited in their abilities, yet were given credit for doing things that were done by other alien species. But as human beings saw the Anunnaki as gods and goddesses, they naturally transferred credit to the Anunnaki because they were more tangible, something they could see, make an image of, and so forth. Although this may not be for everybody, but with our connections to extraterrestrials, it may be of huge value to examine our past in this particular way. Because when we remember more of who we are, why we continue to repeat the patterns without understanding them, then we can be more of our whole selves in a way that is free from old baggage. We can have clear knowledge of ourselves, accept ourselves, and create what we want to have for our future. If you want to know what the Anunnaki look like, one easy way is to see the crop circle from 2001 called the First Chilbolton Face in Hampshire. Mention the name Anunnaki to some people, and deep within them something stirs. A memory of Earth and Mars, and often there's anger, fear, pain, and confusion about the Anunnaki. People seem to like to blame them for all of Earth's problems. Some people remember being part of their family 
for better or worse and yet others don't want to hear anything about them because it dredges up feelings they'd rather avoid or deny there are stories from people who think the Anunnaki are vicious reptilians who have been battling for control over the earth for the last half million years and they call all the shots while we sit here like helpless pawns a lot of what we've learned about the Anunnaki was via bad press due to incorrect translations there were different Anunnaki factions and there were aliens who gave the impression they were Anunnaki's the Anunnaki are archetypal symbolic and mythic too so we may each feel a certain personal identification with one or more of them which is a very interesting phenomenon to investigate because people feel a reaction to the Anunnaki it's a huge key that our personal feelings and memories about the Anunnaki still influence us today the most important event that took place when the Anunnaki's ruled earth was that man rebelled against slavery and demanded sovereignty and received it the Anunnaki left in the beginning when the source created souls in order to be able to reflect back to itself what it was beings later manifested in the constellation of Lyra these were the first creator gods the Council of Twelve and the Elohim who knew how to create matter from light and create they did planets stars universe life forms for themselves and eventually others the Liren's physical lifetimes lasted for approximately 1,000 years in time however their lifespan decreased they sought out something that would enable them to live longer lives so that they could experience the wonder and miracle of existence they found that gold not only increased their longevity but provided them with a superconductivity which gave them the ability to be very telepathic and experience their multi-dimensionality many thousands of years passed and the beings from Lyra spread out into the cosmos and created new civilizations some went to Vega others the Pleiades and yet others Sirius but they knew of their roots in Lyra and Sirius and that they were creator gods at that point also known as the watchers the search for gold to maintain their longevity continued because unfortunately their source for this magical substance was not forever lasting their planet was destroyed and their lives were doomed they had to find another way of living elsewhere approximately 4.6 billion years ago in our solar system there existed mercury venus mars no moons a fourth planet larger than earth with many moons including a larger one Jupiter Saturn no rings Uranus Neptune and Pluto which was a satellite of Saturn four billion years ago another planet came into our still forming solar system this planet had its own moons it arrived at approximately the same orbit as the fourth planet called Maldek the one that existed beyond Mars Mars was then the third planet this planet's moons impacted the fourth planet shattering it so that part of it became the asteroid belt the remnant of the impact as it cooled and moved into a tighter orbit around the Sun became the earth and brought with it the large planet that was the moon of the fourth planet this is our moon approximately 67 percent of the former planet is earth earth brought with it water but there was water on the other planet as well as it reformed and became a sphere again the rift where the shattering took place is now the Pacific Ocean area this other planet was responsible for shattering the moons gravitationally that caused Saturn's rings and for turning Uranus on its side so that it has a highly inclined axis and this also caused Pluto to release from Saturn and come into its own orbit this planet of course that caused all the havoc was is Nibiru it's our 10th planet not really the 12th bases were set up on the moon Mars moon Phobos and Deimos are remnants of that original impact that created the asteroid belt these moons have been used for bases and minerals and water
The group of beings who originated in Lyra later split up and evolved into vegans, Syrians and Pleiadians, also known as the Anunnaki. This particular group is attributed to having their own satellite. Their planet, which is partially artificial, was considered to be Nibiru. However, Nibiru is not really the home of the Anunnaki. Sirius was. Nibiru was made up of what you would call space pirates who imitated other beings, and sometimes a few from one planet would join them, including the Anunnaki. The story of the Anunnaki has been mixed up with these pirates through time so some see the Anunnaki as being only evil. The name Anunnaki can mean many different things. It's rich with meaning. An is short for Anachnu, which means we. An also means heaven. Naki means clean. So the name can mean we are clean. Ki also means earth. So we are here on earth. Heaven is earth. Anu is here on earth. The we is also meant as a collective oneness of the source. They were tall, giant. In Hebrew, the word for giant is Anakim and have also been called the Nordics or blondes even though not all of them had blonde hair or blue eyes. It's easy to see their Lyran and Syrian roots in their appearance. They also glowed a golden color. Their symbol is the winged disc which not only represents their starships but also symbolic of their ability of the spirit to fly free while remembering its wise divine source. These Anunnaki were later called the Elohim and Nephilim, those who descended, came down. In Genesis 6-4, it's written, The Lord said, My breath shall not abide in man forever, since he too is flesh, let the days be allowed him be one hundred and twenty years. It was then and later too that the Nephilim appeared on earth when the divine beings cohabitated with the daughters of men who bore them offspring. They were the heroes of old, men and renown. It's thought by some that the Nephilim were sinful gods who fell from grace. They fell all right in their spaceships. This can also be seen as symbolic, the fall having to do with lowering one's frequency from spirit into physical matter, which is slower and denser. Fall also means forgetting one's true source. As life forms choose to come to Earth, their vibration goes through changes so they're more matched to the frequency of Earth, their new home. Now, these ETs literally came down from space, but souls choosing to incarnate upon the Earth also had to change their vibrational frequencies. Enlil was first to come to Earth and was there even before mankind was created. The Sumerian text called mankind the black-headed people. If anyone doubts the location of Eden or why it was chosen by the Anunnaki as a locale, please read on from Genesis. Then before there was any rain, he formed man. From the dust of the earth, he blew into his nostrils the breath of life, and man became a living being. The Lord God planted a garden in Eden in the east and placed there the man whom he had formed. And then all the other life forms came into being water animals minerals Genesis does say that the first river in Eden was Pishon and winds through the whole land of Havila where the gold is the gold of that land is good Bedellum is there and lapis lazuli the name of the second river is Gihon the one that winds through the whole land of Cush the name of the third river is Tigris the one that flows east of Ashur. And the fourth river is the Euphrates. This is part of Earth's story and occurred after there already was life on Earth. Hominid beings. Hominids are distinctly human-like creatures, different from apes or chimpanzees. The Anunnaki came to Earth for a haven for themselves and found it rich with gold, copper, silver, and other minerals. They felt that here was their last chance for longevity. Survival and the gold was the best conductor of energy, which had many important uses. 
they mined gold for a very long time hundreds of thousands of years by our standards for theirs only a few weeks have passed what according to the Old Testament happened God said now that the man has become like one of us knowing good and bad what if he should stretch out his hand and take also from the tree of life and eat and live forever so man was banished from Eden to work the soil from which he was taken further on in Genesis we read the Lord saw how great man's wickedness on earth was and how every plan devised by his mind was nothing but evil all the time and the Lord regretted that he had made man on earth and his heart was saddened the Lord said I will blot out from earth the men whom I created men together with beasts creeping things and birds of the sky for I regret that I made them but Noah found favor with the Lord for my part I am about to bring the flood waters upon the earth to destroy all flesh under the sky in which there is breath of life everything on earth shall perish but I will establish my covenant with you and you shall enter the ark with your sons the ark was symbolic and literal not only a ship but a covenant Stephanie Daly author and translator states from her book myths from Mesopotamia creation the flood Gilgamesh and others from 1991 that in the epic of creation the epic which explains the history of the cosmos and the Anunnaki as creator gods the key element involves the possession of the tablets of destinies in Daly's own translation of the epic Tiamat is a female who is plotted against by her own family and then has the tables turned on her by her lover Kingu Quingu or Zu and the Anunnaki after she gives him the tablets of destiny the Anu power Ia married to Damkina overhears the plot and takes the fate into his own hands slaying Apsu and Mamu afterwards he rested in his own quarters and named them Apsu and made his home there here is where he and Damkina created their son Marduk and Marduk was raised by a nurse and he was suckled by the goddesses what followed in the epic is a war created by accusations and conspiracies back and forth between the forces of Anshar his son Anu his son Ia and his son Marduk against Tiamat and Kingu Marduk slays Tiamat of womankind the gods rejoice and make Marduk their leader Marduk took back the tablets of destinies and became the king of the entire universe let's remember that we're talking about extraterrestrials here symbolic and literal not the source some of these beings were very wise and knew how to transform energy and light into matter they were and are cedars basically the Anunnaki who came to earth we're not terribly different from where we are today in terms of scientific development according to the Enuma Elish the idea occurred to Marduk that they could create a being that would mine the gold for them and then the gods could take it easy they used the DNA of slain Kingu and combined it with a humanoid being on earth after many various experiments in which they created other races and they have many horrible failures as well they created a hybrid being Adam Adapa which evolved into modern human it is written he created mankind from his blood imposed the toil of the gods on man and released the gods from it when Ea the wise had created mankind he imposed the toils of the gods on them that deed is impossible to describe in both the Enuma Elish and the Atrahasis the reason for creating man is the same to relieve the gods of hard labor why there are different versions of this story of creation is more speculative than concretely known but we can assume that a couple of reasons could be the era in which the epics were written who was in power at the time and who wanted to praise one God over another God or goddess actually the name human can be traced to Enki also known as Ea Hugh is a transliteration of the ancient Sumerian Ea his father was Anu Anu and his official wife Antu had a son called Enlil Hugh was also Horus by the way therefore another connection to the Ninhursag also known as Hathor 
what about earth Enki is Lord of Earth in the early days of earth Enki's symbol was the crescent moon with a bearded olden God surrounded by flowing water the crescent moon relates to science measuring the oceans and tides Enki's specialties in later years the crescent moon developed another association in the other ancient mythology Enki is known as Oannes Ptah Quetzalcoatl and even his own son Thoth the Anunnaki who some call the Nephilim later procreated with the beings who were on earth at the time the souls of those who became human came to earth by their own free will to experience physicality several other extraterrestrial civilizations later contributed their own input into human DNA and created many races of humans and other creatures a couple of which have since left this planet such as the dinosaurs however these hybrids our missing link in our evolution helped the Anunnaki mine their gold it seems pretty obvious thus far the Anunnaki were pattern makers the creators of archetypes and a part of the template for human life on earth throughout all cultures on earth the same story of these gods albeit with different names depending upon where you are their gifts to humanity their failures their characteristics their loves their battles and the results of such warfare are recorded in literature ritual art oral tradition and religion astrology is one of the major sciences they brought to earth and each main god or goddess had their own constellation the Anunnaki gave the humans knowledge of how to be this human being how to take care of themselves gave them guidelines rules for proper living and yet at times they were also manipulators and as long as people didn't upset the gods they were safe and provided for after some time the humans evolved to a point where they began to question their purpose and their future they rebelled against their creators the Anunnaki the humans wanted to have the nectar of the gods for themselves why shouldn't they be able to have their free will live as long as their gods did why shouldn't they have power and wealth or whatever they felt they lacked and then the sad realization that they were not like the gods read the early sad epics of Enkidu and Gilgamesh who desperately wanted to be divine and have everlasting life only to find out that their mortal side won out you'll also find out more about the flood and the Anunnaki from the epic of Gilgamesh the Anunnaki discussed the possible consequences if they shared the gold the process of alchemy with the humans some of the Anunnaki such as the Syrian leader Enki were in favor of letting humans be free and equal to them other Anunnaki were angry because of the blending of the two life forms and the continual complaints humans had to the Anunnaki one of the Anunnaki leaders who had no patience for humans is Enlil Enlil was the Prince of Heaven and Earth he was in charge of airspace he was chief of the gods and Lord of Sumer Enki and Enlil were half brothers through the same father Anu who was the leader of this Anunnaki group they also had to contend with Marduk one of Enki's sons who was proclaimed the greatest king of the gods in the later years the symbol of the crescent moon was associated with Nana or Sin Enlil's and Nenlil's son who Sinai was named for and who became known as Allah note the symbol with the star is used in Islam and is directly related to Enlil's side of the family this is proof of the battle for power by the two camps of Anunnaki those of Enki versus those of Enlil actually a terrible nuclear war between the Anunnaki took place in the Sinai and at the Great Pyramid for control over the region Ninursag acted as a mediator and brought the two sides to a peace agreement but in fact there were many more camps that evolved out of Enki and Enlil's lineages the Anunnaki had two factions fighting one another over humanity's fate this was coded in the books as the Garden of Eden a genetic metaphor and a literal place Enlil didn't want the humans to be equal to them Enki was in favor of allowing human self-rulership respect and equality 
in order to ensure that humans would be able to in the long run benefit from their ancestry Enki the serpent of wisdom and healing suggested those who came to be called Adam and Eve to eat from the tree of knowledge had they eaten only from the tree of life humans would have lived a very long time but not have been the wiser nor would humans have reached their own intellectual and spiritual evolution in which they would realize that they're equal to the gods who created them as new humans by virtue of their DNA this trick enraged Enlil who from that point onward was furious that humans mated with the Anunnaki and he wanted to punish humanity civilizations and religions were created by Enki and Enlil and later their offspring Egypt for example was developed by Enki and his lineage the areas of the Sinai Jerusalem Sumer India and more were fought over by the two families of Enki and Enlil changing hands back and forth through different pyramid wars the battle Horus fought for Ra against Seth was the first that used humans in a war with weapons and this began wars mankind fought against itself the battle between Egypt and Israel goes way back and it was due to the control and confusion set into motion by many of these factors extraterrestrials angels humans mixed messages control and fear between worshiping Enki's family or Enlil's family Atlantis's final sinking was due to astronomical events combined with those humans and Anunnaki's experimenting with sound technology they didn't plan on destroying the place they just miscalculated the last great flood approximately 13,000 years ago became a legend when Enki went against the other Anunnaki and saved humans the Noah's of earth when this accident occurred the first flood was in Lemuria and then there were others in Atlantis several times those with Enki forced Enlil to help save whatever humans they could Enki having felt completely disgusted and disappointed by Enlil's fierce control left earth during the exodus Moses in confusion as to who he was speaking with on the mountain the Ten Commandments were supposedly dictated to Moses and he wrote it down after he was taught the Hebrew alphabet and language which he would later teach to his people have you ever noticed how at this point in the Bible Adonai is no longer mentioned and YHWH Jehovah Yahweh is and yet everyone thinks they're the same God just who is this Jehovah YHWH Jehovah was an agent of Enlil not long after the Exodus the other Anunnaki left their earthly influence and their secrets of transforming gold into the powerful substance that allowed their longevity and spiritual abilities also vanished their knowledge about life was held in the hands of very few who began to abuse it and became greedy then in time humans who remembered died or disappeared a lot of knowledge was lost and yet people keep trying to capture that special essence of gold in the form of statues and other such items mistakenly believing that power equated to violence and destruction and hoarding wealth they felt it was their key to immortality that which would make them the God powdered gold has beneficial properties but the real gold is within remembering oneself and connection to the source this is really what Enki had tried to infuse into people the Anunnaki left the earth in a sense but not without creating counterparts or aspects of themselves who would reincarnate as humans in order to share the human experience with them their oversouls some of these continued the lineage through King David and Jesus some of these counterparts or aspects have stubbornly stuck to what they presume was Enlil's and Marduk's agenda to control the earth for their own purposes keeping humans more fearful dependent ignorant yet others continue to share the ancient wisdom from other Anunnaki encouraging humanity to remember their source which they can access from within their individual and collective cellular or spiritual memories in order to break the ancient and false bonds of slavery fear and ignorance and reclaim what they feel is rightfully theirs any way you look at it the confusing chaotic battle continues and it doesn't have to are these Anunnaki gods returning to earth via Nibiru remember Nibiru really wasn't the home of the Anunnaki 
they have never really left. First of all, they exist in many of us as a reincarnation or as aspects of them. And as a human civilization, we have finally reached the understanding that we are more than ETs or humans and we do have free will and choice. We can decide how we want our experiences to be. Secondly, time exists in the third dimension but not beyond, so one can argue that everything is happening right now. But honestly, that doesn't always change what already happened in our past. All that matters is now. Don't make a big deal about the return of Nibiru. If you're looking for a savior, look to yourselves. And if one day the Anunnaki, will we still be playing out old dramas and wars? Will we be able to greet them as equals? Will we even want them to be here? Will we care either way? Is it even possible for these old Anunnaki to return here and be as they once were?